Hello, and welcome to the Absolute Business Success Podcast Show with me, Carol Evans, your business consultant and coach. I've worked in business all my adult life and set up and run a number of my own businesses over the last 15 years. So on this show, I'd like to share with you the tips and strategies that have helped me create success in my business and life, as well as in my clients. In this series, I'm interviewing women who inspire and asking why she does what she does. If you want total inspiration, then why not hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out? And if you'd like even more information, then why not check out my website at consultancyandcoaching.co.uk. Here you'll find lots of wonderful freebies that'll help you make the progress you desire. Now, let's get started. Hello, Olivia, and welcome. And thank you so much for joining me this morning and for providing us with some Monday morning motivation. <laughs> so, Hello. hi. So, why don't you uh, just tell us who you are and what you do? Hi, okay, hi. Yeah, I, I'm Olivia Bushnell. I'm a social media manager and copywriter, uh, but I primarily work with businesses with morals and manners. Uh, so I'm slightly different in the social media manager game in that I'm not really more, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. I'm more like be authentic, be honest, be doing good in the world. Oh, that sounds so refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, you got me straight away at the morals and manners uh, <laughs> aspect. So kind of what was your driving force then to decide not only to be a social media manager, but to be one that does want to uh, find, you know, set out something that's in a much better place in the world? Um, it's various things, really. I mean, personally, I am, I am pretty anti-hustle and pretty... Moral so I? <laughs> values driven myself. Yeah. Um, so it was definitely a lot personal experience and that. Um, and also, I know it works. And I know there are a lot of people who are doing or want to do good in the world. And they feel like they can't because they have to, they have to be promoting themselves in a set way. They have to be doing what everybody else is doing. They have to be creating more content. They have to be doing more, more of this, more of that, more of things that they don't enjoy. Um, and I wanted to help those people to be out there and reach people without feeling awful about it. Yeah, that must have um, been a great relief to a lot of your clients. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to do the hustle. Yeah. And I think it, it leaks into people's personal use of social media as well. I think there's a lot of people who use even their personal accounts in what is essentially a business manner, even though they're not running a business. They sort of have this attitude of they have to be following these many people. They have to have that many followers themselves. If they don't get this many likes, if they don't post this often and you don't have to, you know, you just, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah no I, I can imagine though that it's been quite a challenge for you to establish a business with such morals and standards yourself so do you want to talk to us a little bit about some of those challenges that you've you found um for me really the biggest challenge was sort of owning what what i do myself and putting it out there in a way that was unapologetic basically and saying, look, no, this is how I do social media. And I know it works. And that's how I do it because that's who I am. And that's what I offer. Um, because I, when I initially started, I did start off as sort of doing various different things. And I didn't really put that out there. It was just like, yes, I'm a social media manager. Um, and as soon as I started saying, look, no, I, I don't think you have to do this thing that is popular at the minute. No, I don't think you need to be posting that much. Uh, people sort of came um, and I think it was refreshing for people like you say and I think there are a lot of people out there who know that social media can improve their business and grow their business but they are terrified to do it or they feel like they can't do it because they can't do it in that specific way yeah. um, so I think there's definitely a, a call for people who are prepared to do it differently 
Yeah. So how did you deal with the actual challenge yourself then? How did you kind of deal with that business of, I, I really want to kind of put my real self out there, but it is so intoxicating when you see what is out on social media and intimidating and overwhelming as much as it's good, it's bad. And, you know, so kind of dealing with your own issues, mm. what kind of uh, processes did you go through to kind of have the confidence to do that? Initially, I actually totally changed up who I was following on social media. So I switched to follow people who were totally authentic and prepared to do things differently and talking about that so that basically my feed became what I wanted to put out into the world. Um, it was all people who were just authentically themselves and proud of that. Mm. Um, so that helped a lot. Um, I've also, I've been seeing a coach who has been amazing. <laughs> um, and he's sort of set a lot of challenges for me. Like, well, why don't you comment on this many posts and just be yourself on them and things like that. Uh, and that it was sort of this combination of seeing other people do it, even though it wasn't identical, just seeing other people doing it their way. Um, and then feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So was there ever a time when you're kind of like making this transition to be the type of uh, business that you wanted to be where you ever felt like giving it all up? Not like giving it up, but there have been uh, times where I felt like I, I can't do this. I can't, I just, I can't do this. Where there's been, um, like if I've had to sort of speak to clients and be like no I'm not doing that for you because it breaches my my moral values um and I and I think I can't, I can't do this I can't I can't do this this is this is terrible this isn't this isn't sensible business what um but I've never wanted to give it up um and once once I've sort of got over and done the thing I felt like I can't do I tend to feel like yeah yeah no this is definitely right for me this is definitely how I want to run my business Mm. um so that helps again because then i think well yeah okay it's hard but i am definitely doing the right thing for me so. yeah it makes so much difference i think when you are absolutely truly in touch with the person you want to be in terms of running your own business and that you don't get dragged into doing things within that business that take you outside of your values and you know yeah. that's a whole new topic on <laughs> <laughs> on values and being true to those but uh, so tell us then Olivia what what did you dream of doing what did you think you'd end up doing when you were a, when you were a little girl then what did <laughs> what were your I, I wanted to be a journalist for the oh, longest okay. time I wanted to be a journalist um and I, really I wanted to write but I wanted to write important things basically um so yeah so I've, I've sort of <laughs> sort of got that route yeah there's um, a link there I, I do write things <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't go into journalism because uh, yeah. I, I think it would have been it's very difficult to be sort of anti-hustle in journalism I think yeah. because of the nature of news and content and that uh, it's very difficult uh, but yeah I still get to write which is a real passion of mine so yeah yeah but the world needs journalists with your values Olivia so yeah. I, I think that is the problem <laughs> with uh, journalism these days isn't it possibly it's too much kind of <laughs> yeah negative influencing yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah so what does actually being the boss really mean to you what does it give you in your in your life for me a lot of it is is freedom um freedom in my business uh because i i live with a mental illness and so being able to take a self-care day or and to fit my work around self-care and you know taking care of my mental health is really important mm -hmm. um and it has actually it, it enables me to work at all so that is really sort of the key thing uh for me is just that i can time manage in a way that actually suits me you know it doesn't matter if i'm working late at night it doesn't matter if i'm up late in the morning but as long as the work gets done the work gets done and that's that's fine yeah. That's just so important, isn't it? I mean, all of us have got uh, mental health and, you know, being able to manage your time effectively and to be able to self-care is just so important. And it's so good that you've been able to find your niche, 
which allows you to do what you love and to be able to run it, as you say, in a, in a way that works for you. So, so um, what kind of tips would you give to other people that are thinking of starting their own business? I think you need to, you need a reason, you need a why, you need to know why you're doing it. Um, because if you start a business and you've not got any sort of core to hold on to, you, you just get led anywhere and everywhere. Um, you really need to think while you're thinking, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this a business? That you need to know why you want to do it and how you want to do it that way. Um, and also consider your own personal circumstances. Um, and because there are ways to work around them that you need to, I wish I had set up in at the beginning, I wish I had taken that into account instead of, because I very much went into it in sort of a, in a essentially a nine to five way. Right. Um, with that sort of mindset of, no, I need to be available certain hours and I need to do this and I need to do it that way. Um, and I wish I had sort of thought at the very start, like, no, no, this is what I need. <laughs> So I'm going to work around these parameters um, and set it up that way from the start. Yeah. That's really interesting. And this is why interviews like this are just so important because people new to their business might feel the same. And I know when I first moved from uh, my nine to five to self-employment that I had exactly the same attitude. I'd get up, I'd even put my suit on and come and sit in my home office, you know, because I felt I had to be that prepared and, and uh, yeah, I think being able to flex your business around to suit you is just uh, incredible because that's what living a fulfilling life is all about, isn't it? And running your own business should enable you to do that. So in terms of like, um, there's lots of businesses out there who we both will see on social media who are struggling to get clients, struggling to meet their revenue targets, uh, struggling with overwhelm because we talked right at the start about how the, the the negative side of social media where you know everybody puts out this very true image of their perfect life <laughs> and that can be really overwhelming when you're dealing with day-to-day -day activities so and you know I come across people all the time who are thinking oh you know like I just need to get a job um, what would your advice be to those people who are thinking yeah maybe I'll just have to give this up and go back to the nine to five. I think you need to go all in. Um, even if it's sort of a side hustle, you don't need to give up your job, but you need to, when you're working on your business, you need to commit to your business. You need to really, you've got to give it all you've got to know if it's going to work. Um, and I think there can be, I mean, I know I had it, this, this fear of failure, basically sort of like well I'll just gently go I'll just I'll just very tip my toes in um and see if that you know see if it well it won't work you you have to really go for it um and then judge what's working um I mean social media wise a lot of people seem to focus on their actual content over anything else and as much as yeah content is important you need to be engaging with people. You need to be involved in your community. Uh, you need to be out there actively finding your clients and speaking to them um, and commenting on their posts and being involved in their discussions and not just to sell yourself, but just to be there. Because a lot of social media is essentially networking. You're building relationships. You're, people are finding you and learning your name and who you are and what you do. So that when they think, oh, I need a social media manager. Oh, I've seen Olivia post about that on somebody else's post. You come to mind. Um, and so, yeah, you need content, but you also need to be out there engaging. Um, and I always say that engagement is more important than content if you've only got a set amount of hours most of them should be engaging and then use the rest of it to create content um so yeah and consistency as well um i notice a lot of small businesses especially i think because they're sort of they're short on time and then when they especially like freelancers they go through a lull 
And in that lull, suddenly all their content comes out. They've got all this time and they're like, yes, I'm going to post today and then this afternoon and then tomorrow. And then it goes dead again. And no, you don't need to do that. You can create that content while you've got that time. Absolutely. But then schedule it. Don't, don't, you don't have to post it all right now because you've made it. Um, you can schedule it out so that you have a consistent content going out and then people know that you're there. They know you're posting every week or once a month even um, and they can check in. Yeah, there's some amazing tips there, Olivia, and I'm sure there'll be a few people who'll be really relieved to hear some of the things that you talked about there. And I just want to touch base on the first thing that you said about the fear of failure. And, you know, I, I don't know any person in business, however successful they are, that do not still, uh, you know, does not still suffer with a fear of failure from time to time. And, you know, the thing to remember is that it is just a thought. You know, it isn't actually anything real. It's just a thought. And as you said, you know, uh, so many people just dip their toe in. But if you dip your toe in, all you're going to get is a little dip back. <laughs> and that just isn't enough to sustain anybody. So, uh, you know, I think that's some uh, really great points that you raised. And it, obviously, in terms of uh, your speciality in social media and those tips that... Um, you you just mentioned and what what kind of time do you think that it takes in your in your week to actually kind of do this level of engagement and what kind of social media platforms is it specific to individual businesses or how, how do you decide that it really depends on you your business your industry it depends on so many things i tend to advise people especially if they're sort of uh, freelancers and small business owners yeah, to be where you enjoy. So if you enjoy Instagram and you can't afford a social media manager, then use Instagram. You don't have to be also on Facebook and MeWe and TikTok and everywhere. Like you don't, you don't need to be. Be the places that you actually enjoy being because then you will actually post there and you will actually engage there because you enjoy being there. Um, and the other thing is you don't need to be everywhere because I see a lot of people who think they need to be on every single platform and you can't do it. It's not sustainable unless you've got an entire team behind you. Um, because it, it, I mean, it is a fun job, social media, especially if you're doing it um, as a business, you know, engagement can take a lot of time, especially if you are, sort of grassroots building it from nothing uh, because you have to be going out there doing the engagement you have to be finding people to speak to you have to be finding groups to comment in you have to be very proactive about it um, and obviously content if you want more content going out yes people will more people will find you faster but that you've got to weigh up the time that it will then take you to both create the content, to schedule the content, to do hashtag research if you're on Instagram um, and things like that. It's, it's, not, it's not a five minute job, basically. No. Um, and also a lot of people have this attitude that sort of, well, you know, my, my niece, she, she uses Facebook, so she, she, can, she can do it for me. Um, and like, yeah, but it's very different to you know actually running a business social media account because you need it needs to be professional which is very different to posting on your own facebook page um it needs to be you need to be targeting your actual client base you can't just post you know this photo of my dog from yesterday doesn't it look cute um there needs to be a reason behind it there needs to be a strategy behind it um, so yes, you can do it on your own. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're just starting out, no, you can't afford a social media manager. Um, but equally you need to read into it. You need to find out who your clients are and where they are and, uh, what they want. Hmm. 
Yeah, some more great tips there. And, and all I can say from listening to you is that uh, your services would be highly recommended because <laughs> it does sound like uh, it's a lot of work to actually gain the real traction that you need. And I think sometimes as a, a small business owner, you can be distracted by the numbers game. Oh. You know, people saying, oh, I've built up my followers to X amount of hundred in, you know, the first month or whatever and you know that doesn't really matter does it <laughs> like, but i think it, it, it they are vanity uh, yeah. uh indicators aren't they and and um so i think what you've said is uh, is really really great and yeah. and good advice for all of us but i think it does indicate our need for you so <laughs> So um, tell us, uh, Olivia, you know, where can people find out more about you and what you offer and your services? Because one of the things um, you, you stressed a little bit there was for people starting out in business, they might not be able to afford you. But I'm sure it doesn't have to be wholly expensive. I'm sure that there's a starting point that, that can grow as well. So yeah. where do people find out more about you and your services? Well, I have a website, bushnellcommunitysolutions.com. Uh, where you, uh, you can get there also from my Facebook page and from my Instagram, which is Bushnell underscore CS, um, where I actually talk a lot. I put a lot of tips out over there as well. And I have a lot of tips for small businesses who can't afford a social media manager just yet um, in the hopes that you can grow using my free tips and then hire me. Yeah. Um, and I'm also uh, creating downloadable kits for various different um, industries. So they're a one-off payment and you get a month of ready to post inclusive accessible social media content um, and also another month of prompts to spark your own content um so yeah go and follow me on social media yeah that sounds great no i definitely recommend everybody to do that and also those kits sound amazing so really kind of easy uh step up into getting some uh, help and, and advice if you can't feel that you can go as far as hiring uh, Olivia at this moment in time but I'm sure that everybody's been impressed by your advice so I thank you so much for joining me today thank and you. it's been really interesting talking to you and hearing all about what you do and I'm so glad that you found and been able to uh, work in a business that suits you and and what you want out of it uh, and that's the purpose, really, of being in business, isn't it? That um, you can do what you love and work it around your own lifestyle and be happy. So <laughs> it's really, really important. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today and for listening in. And I hope you all have a great day and a great week. Thank you. And thank you very much again, Olivia. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, which I sincerely hope you have found both beneficial and enjoyable. I'd be truly grateful if you'd be able to leave a wonderful review for me. Now remember, go check out my website, download the freebies and stay tuned for my next episode. Bye for now.